Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent and I'm going to be your host for this episode. In this episode, we have Chairman of the Reading Board of Selectmen, Daniel Ensminger. But first, we have Reading Fire Chief Greg Burns here in studio. Let's listen in on that conversation. Hello and welcome to Community Conversation. We're here with Chief Greg Burns, who is the Chief of the Reading Fire Department. Nice to see you here today, Chief Burns. Thank you for having me today. Well, it's, it's great to have you on and kind of get a representation of uh, everything that the Fire Department does for our town. What are some of the things that uh, maybe the Fire Department is looking at in terms of initiatives in town right now? Um, one of our newest programs is, is, uh, done, is, is being overseen by uh, one of our lieutenants, Lieutenant Mark Dwyer. Mm -hmm. We've expanded our SAFE program. It's our public okay. education program. And uh, it had always been a school-based program uh -huh. where we go in to the, to the, uh, to the elementary schools and, and uh, teach a stop, drop, and roll and okay. basic fire protection sure. safety for, for children. October is Fire Safety Prevention Month, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, last year it was expanded out to include senior citizens. Oh, okay. And uh, fire data across the country and, uh -huh. and in Massachusetts shows that our senior population is particularly at risk. Okay. Uh, cooking fires mm -hmm. um, and uh, also falls in the home. Mm. And so Lieutenant Dwyer has been focusing on our, uh, our senior population sure. and um, working to help them get smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, okay. prevent falls in the home, and also sure. cooking safely. Mm. So and where is he doing that kind of education uh, for our seniors? Uh, Community-wide. He's, he's been to the senior centers. He's, okay. been, uh, he's been to um, some of our um, senior uh, housing in the mm -hmm. community. And he's also uh, even gone to a neighboring community for a, um, uh, a men's club uh, okay. where a lot of residents from Reading happen to oh, go. Okay. So right. he's, he's been very creative in, mm -hmm. in uh, reaching out to the community. That's good. So, so uh, what other things are happening with fire prevention uh, education in the month of October here? Well, um, we have our open house, our okay. annual open house. That'll be uh, October 17th, uh, where it gives us an opportunity to, to, to talk to the uh, residents one on one. Sure. Obviously, we encourage people to uh, change their batteries and their smoke detectors, mm -hmm. to make sure they have smoke detectors on every level, and to also have carbon monoxide protection. Right. Very, Im very important to have have that uh, level of protection. Absolutely, you know. it just happened to me this weekend that the battery in my smoke detector on the main level of my house went out, and so I was thinking about that, yeah. you know, checking. I put the date on it like they recommend, so I know when I, and I noticed it had been over a year since I had changed it. So some of those reminders are really important. Do you use other venues to kind of help remind people about those kind of things? We, we, we usually uh, have a, a poster up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, change your clock, change your battery, okay. to yeah. remind people of that, because sure. uh, they, will, they will start to chirp. Yep. And uh, so you best to go out there and change them all with fresh batteries. Right, right. And if there's a, if we had a power outage for any length of time, mm -hmm. that wears on the batteries, so okay. it could cause them to uh, need to be re replaced sooner. Sure, sure. Uh, what other kinds of initiatives are, are the, is the fire department involved in? Um, well, the, the fire department has four major functions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, fire suppression. Sure. Um, and that's the one we care about a lot. <laughs> that's right. In in fire prevention that we just right. spoke about spoke about, and we also um, d uh, deliver emergency medical services to okay. the public, and then our other major function is emergency management. Mm. So. Um, uh, emergency uh, medical services, uh, we provide the ambulance treatment and transportation okay. for the community. Sure. Uh, and we, there's two levels of emergency services. Uh, there's mm -hmm. basic life support and okay. advanced life support. All right. The advanced life support level means that we can give uh, medications, uh, mm -hmm. sophisticated medications and treatment techniques okay. to patients who need it. Uh, and so we've been at that level now uh, for 11 years, okay. 12 years, I'm sorry. Uh, and we've expanded that program out to our to our fire trucks, the mm. big red trucks you see oh around yeah. town. Oh yeah. We actually registered those as class five ambulances. Okay. And we can carry medications on them. Oh, all right. So uh, even though the ambulance might not be there, uh -huh. we have trained people on those sure. uh, fire trucks that can deliver high quality emergency medical and, and care. And has that something that's been effective for, well, for high, people? Very effective. Oh good, that's very good Very effective. So um, it was just a natural progression for us. First, sure. 
uh, we expanded that out to the uh, engine company that's at our west side fire station on yep. Woburn Street. Yep. And then the second phase was to put it on our ladder truck out of Main Street. Mm -hmm. And the last build out of that was the, uh, the engine that, that responds out of Main Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, one of the things that were, were that's that's troubling that you and I spoke about just before sure. the, the show started was the opioid uh, crisis that we right. see nationwide, and it's it's also impacted uh, Reading as well. Mm -hmm. um, with the firefighters have had to give the um, medication uh, Noxalong, um, also called Narcan, uh, a, a number of times, and we see that increasing. Okay. Uh, from uh, from one year to the to last year, from 2013 to 14, we saw the uh, increase in our in the administration of our Narcan, 266 percent. Okay. Wow. So it was really, really a troubling wow. statistic. Yeah. yeah. So if uh, someone came upon a family member or a friend in their home who they think may have overdosed on anything really, but on an opioid in particular, what should their response be? What, sh what should they do? Well, they want to immediately call 911 because it's, it's, it's critical. They go into respiratory arrest. Right. And, um, and so, you know, we want to get the fire department there as soon as sure. we can because we can administer that. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it's being mixed with other, right. other um, medications, other, it's, it's not just heroin or opiate. It, it's a mix of things mm -hmm. sometimes they're using. So when the uh, Narcan's administered, other things happen. So y it's, okay. it's not something you can just administer Narcan sure. and then the, the patient is fine. What kind of training have uh, you and the members of the fire department taken in dealing with those type of episodes? Well, um, everybody has been trained in to administer uh, Narcan. Okay. Um, uh, EMTs like myself, I'm not a paramedic, I'm the next step below that, uh -huh. which, is a, um, which is an EMT. We've all been trained in administering our nasal Narcan. Okay. Um, the paramedics, um, they've been uh, delivering Narcan right along. Uh -huh. They can deliver it nasally or they can uh, deliver it intravenously. Okay. Yeah, so, so a lot of training has gone on there to help that, but of course Absolutely. what we're looking for is prevention. Any thoughts or ideas on, some, on the prevention side of things? No, I think our CASA is working very hard on the, on the, on the prevention aspect of it. It's, um, you know, it, I'm, we're just starting to learn about the, the what leads sure, to it. Sure, sure, right. So the warning uh, signs. And yeah, that kind of I'm, I'm kind of, that's, <laughs> I'm not an expert on that. Right, no, I understand. Yeah. But it, there, there is a progression through where, mm -hmm. where, you know, they they start with one level of uh, drug and then, and then progress and then move through. Move on. Uh, any other initiatives that the fire department is taking up, especially as we head into the holiday season this year, or suggestions for safety issues and that type of thing? Well, it's, um, as any time into decorations, you want to be careful on on how you're using them. Okay. Yeah. Any, you know, any decoration can can be can be flammable and lead mm -hmm. to you know, uh, a rapid spread of fire. Uh, Christmas trees in particular, a dry Christmas tree right. will burn extremely fast, extremely hot, and um, will we'll set a room on fire r within a minute. Yeah, wow. Um, uh, so any, any kind of decorations and heat sources is, is, a, mm -hmm. is something you have to be very cautious of. So, so making sure that people maintain their Christmas trees Keeping them watered as best they can in the winter time, or you know, during the, the holiday season, and and looking at the type of decorations they put on the trees. Any specific decorations that you don't recommend or do recommend? So basically, you, you want to make sure you have good quality lights. You want to make mm -hmm. sure that you not have you know. We tend to store the lights and, and other things and put them away in the, in the attic and bring them out year after year. Right. You want to look at those cords and make sure that they're not uh, that they're not frayed. Then okay. the they're, they're intact so somebody doesn't get electrocuted mm -hmm. or start a, f start a fire with it. Mm -hmm. uh, your Christmas tree, you want to keep it watered. And, um, you know, you, you don't want it to, to block your means of escape from the house uh, if something happened as well. Okay. Do people put their Christmas trees in front of their door? <laughs> no, but you could, you could do it in such a way that that's your main way out. And okay. if, that's, if, if, if that's the source yeah. of the well, problem. Well, I mean, I guess it may, it's, it, you know, some of these things sometimes seem like they should be common sense, but obviously... You know, if people do it sometimes, I guess it's something that we want to make sure people are watching out for. Right. And okay. Any other tips for this the season coming up? Uh, no, that that's that's basically it. you need to be careful of those sure. decorations and make sure that um, your electrical items are safe to use. 
And you had mentioned cooking fires also. Any recommendations regarding cooking? Yes. Yeah. T you know, Thanksgiving is a particular issue with, sure. with cooking fires. You, you want to um, put the turkey in, in the oven and, and leave for, for, for a couple hours. You want to make sure you, you're there for it. Okay. When, when we see them, a lot of times what happens, um, there's grease in the bottom of the stove. And that that's the beginning of the fire. Okay. okay. Or uh, items that are left on the top of the stove th that catch on fire uh -huh. and catch the cabinets on, on fire. It spreads out from there. So it's really just being no noticing what's going on and noticing what you're doing and kind of um, you know maybe making sure you're maintaining your oven and that kind of thing so that you, you don't have grease build up. Right. You don't have a, a grease build up. You want to stay in the home when you're cooking and not go out. You mm -hmm. know we we do see uh, at times somebody's cook something. And they need to run out for something, mm -hmm. and then, and then there's a, there's a fire as a result. Okay, okay. Well, so that's some good ideas and good tips, and and we I know uh, as a community we're very grateful for the work the fire department does, and and uh, kind of helping out and watching over and, and giving some of these things. Any last minute ideas that you might have about these things? Uh, no, nothing else. No, nothing in particular. <laughs> uh, fire department is doing toys for tots again this year, and. I, I believe they will. Okay. Uh, who heads it up is uh, firefighter Bob Beck. He's done okay. it a number of years, and uh, that will start in a, in another month or so. Right. And he works extremely hard. Um, he um, puts the boxes out, collects them, brings them to a central spot. Sure. You know the the uh, Marine Corps. They um, uh, usually they have a warehouse someplace that that, sure. that they bring them to. Sure. Or uh, the last couple of years, they've used pods. So we've collected the toys, put them in a pod, and then a truck okay. comes and takes it away All for right. us. All right, good. But uh, that, that's a great program that Bob Beck works particularly hard and, at. And the fire station, the main fire station, is a drop-off point yes. uh, yep. for that as well. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you, Chief Burns, for being here today and thank sharing you. a little bit of what's going on in the fire department. And uh, as always, if you have a question or concern, I'm sure you can call the fire department and have a question about anything having to do with fire safety. So we thank you for being here today. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll be back just in one moment on Community Conversation here on RCTV. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. I remember I called everyone I knew when they when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things <laughs> of my life. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the skyhook, and he milked it for what 35,000 <laughs> points or something like that. Just again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's <laughs> face. Welcome back to Community Conversation. Next up, we have Daniel Ensminger, the chairman of the Reading Board of Selectmen. Well, hello. I'm here with Dan Ensminger, who is the chair of the Reading Board of Selectmen. Good to see you here, Dan, today. Hi, Kevin. Uh, great to be here. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, uh, you were on the Board of Selectmen. This is your second time on the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, I served back, uh, it was 1989 to 1998. Uh, prior to that, I'd been on the Community Planning and Development Commission. Uh, yeah, they told me I needed my head examined, but I decided to come back <laughs> when uh, the news came out that Pete Heckenbleckner was leaving. Sure. And at that time, we also had two vacancies on the board, so mm -hmm. I thought I'd uh, step back in at least uh, so, a term so, or so. So mm -hmm. your primary reason for coming back mm -hmm. on the board was to ensure a smooth transition? Yes. Or, yeah. 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 So what mm -hmm. have you found uh, it's been like the second time around? Well, uh, it's we've got a great new town manager, Bob Lairlisher, mm -hmm. uh, works very well with the board. I think he's been a great... Uh, communicator with the public. Uh, we've got a lot done, uh, especially uh, made some inroads with the schools on mm -hmm. uh, cooperation on issues like facilities management. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making a lot of improvements to that program, which uh, addresses old town buildings. Um, Bob's just been a dream to work with. He's uh, been great with the union negotiations. Okay. Good, good. Well, I'm glad to hear mm -hmm. that. What are some things that you're working on now? I know there's kind of a movement yep. afoot for a permanent building committee. Explain that to us. Exactly yes, uh, town meeting uh, through an instructional motion asked that uh, 
the uh, permanent building committee be appointed. Uh, I was one of the persons doing the appointment, the other two being the school committee ch chair and the moderator. Mm -hmm. We've appointed five permanent members. Okay. They will be the five that sit on all uh, building decisions. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, they will appoint uh, two so-called temp two to four temporary members. Okay. Uh, for instance, if there's a school building, the schools will designate two to four people, depending sure. on what the state requires for okay. SBAB reimbursement. Okay. And that group is now meeting, and they have one main issue before them. And what is what is that group kind of tasked with at this point? In time? Right now, uh, they're and they they look at generally projects more than two million dollars. Uh, okay. We don't want them looking at school roofs and right. you know mundane stuff or like if we're that. We're building a, right. a doghouse somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the cemetery folks have a fairly old garage. It's uh, sitting okay. up on Laurel Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, has not been maintained well. Uh, we have done some interim steps to to make it safe for them to be in there, but they are before the PVC to uh, seek funding for a, uh, a new building. Uh, now they're going for a $2 million request to town meeting. That group might recommend that they step back a bit and, sure. and uh, indulge in a design phase first. <laughs> okay, so okay. Th they're meeting this evening. And so, right. so, so, really, so really that committee is tasked with looking at any building need that there may be right. in town. Are they doing priorit prioritization work? or They or could be doing that, yeah. They've, they've been asked as part of their uh, charter to, to look at all the ongoing suggested building maintenance uh, activities going on. Okay. Uh, I don't see new school requests in the uh, pipeline right now. They, okay. they seem to have taken care of the elementary space needs with the, sure, uh, with the, with the installation units. of the portables, yeah. Yeah. and that, that's completed finally. Uh, but I, we may be looking at a DPW relocation somewhere down the road okay. uh, because that land has ironically now become very valuable. Uh, <laughs> well, for, we don't for want DPW on valuable land. <laughs> well, that's happened before in my history, yeah. I, uh, I was very involved in the, uh, the uh, landfill redevelopment. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. So. so what would happen potentially mm -hmm. with the DPW property if it were to move? Uh, look, we're, we're looking, looking for, for sites. Uh, we're in discussions with, uh, which I'm not free to get into right now, with sure. the surrounding communities. Okay. But there, there may be some viable options there, and not, not, we're not going to put it in a residential area okay. in, neighbor, in right. Reading. We know right. not to do that. Right, right. Uh, but there might be some other options okay. available. And to the us. idea would be to redevelop the current site into something Correct. that's uh, tax producing. But we've got to do a good pro forma on the numbers. Does sure. it make sense economically? Sure, absolutely. Are we going to get the return back, uh, or does it make sense just to fix what's there right. and keep that, that piece in town ownership? Right. Right. So, uh, so this this committee is mm -hmm. is really going to be looking at the whole picture of buildings, and it's going to be a yes. standing committee. They will. The five members, per, the permanent members, are standing members. Yes. Okay. And they're appointed for three-year terms. Right. Right. So that really seems like the town is trying to be mm -hmm. proactive yeah. with with the the building needs, the the you know infrastructure needs, and that kind it, of thing. It's a great group. We've got uh, construction engineers, civil engineers, uh, pro mm -hmm. property managers. Okay. Still looking for an attorney. We don't have one yet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, people could also serve as associate members to that group, okay. and now uh, under the new charter laws, associate members can be called in to fill a quorum. Okay. Uh, if, say, a member has to step down because of a conflict, sure. the chair can appoint a, an associate member to sit in place of that person. So if someone were yeah. interested in that committee, what would they, what would they do? Uh, send your resume into uh, Town Hall to Paula Shetta, the mm -hmm. uh, secretary's, uh, Secretary of the Board of Selectmen. And she'll present it to the Selectmen? Or she will present to the Appointment Committee. The Appointment is, Committee, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Well, what are some of the other things that are going on in town? We know there's some development going on, but there's also been some road repair this this. Oh, month. yeah. Uh, everyone's, I, I, everyone's probably aware I of that. I got a call from a former yeah. selectman saying, <laughs> expletive deleted, I can't even get downtown to pay my taxes. <laughs> uh, to help me with this. Well, help me. Right. Uh, we've done a lot of work. Uh, there's a, uh, we're doing it in three major areas. Uh, West Street is being completely rebuilt, as yep. folks are undoubtedly know by now. We just laid over 4,500 feet of new drainage, which mm -hmm. should alleviate some of the problems down in the, the Howard Street area okay. that we've been experiencing and other sure. parts of West. When that is done and slated to be completed sometime in late 2016, we will have a well-signalized road, curbs, sidewalks, uh, brand new pavement. We're getting all the pipes in before we put the pavement down. That, <laughs> that's a must. Uh, we're very good about that now. Uh, and the state has been very good at cooperating. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, it does seem like West Street is under constant state of repair in the last several yeah, years. Yeah, there's a lot of pipe to put in this summer. We yeah. really do apologize for the inconvenience, but sure. uh, it will be well worth the wait. We can promise you. I do think the rerouting yeah. of this intersection where Summer Street joins West also is, has been a, a positive that, thing. That can be ba baffling to some until I explain the reasons, <laughs> uh, and really the reason is safety. 
Yeah. Uh, the kids need to cross that for uh, for school. Sure. Uh, pedestrians in general, uh, we're finding that to be a kind of a raceway. If you're heading north on west, you just pume up uh, yeah. Willow Street there. That can't do that anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so any other road repairs that you want to mention or infrastructure repairs? Uh, the work on Main Street is continuing, and that's actually tied into another project, which is okay. uh, we have, are now f finally discussing publicly. Uh, we put a 12-inch water main in there from the tracks down to Hopkins with okay. the idea that someday a neighboring town might want to wheel water through Reading to serve <laughs> it. And indeed, North Reading's town meeting just voted after some private discussions with uh, a subquorum of each board. Uh -huh. They're very interested in, in buying MWA water, uh, possibly having us manage their uh, water system, their billing system. Okay. Uh, so that's news that we really haven't talked about publicly, but sure. it, since the town meeting up there is taking it on, it's uh, now public. It now makes it public, yeah. right. <laughs> They're currently getting water from uh, wells on the Ipswich and uh, mm -hmm. Andover, but th that's not gonna meet their future growth needs. So. Right, right. They need it for economic development, and ironically, that'll help out uh, RMLD, who wants to sell more power to the sure. four towns they serve. So sure, sure. hopefully we can help them out. So yeah. it was kind of forward thinking there to put yeah. in the larger pipes down under, under Main yes. Street. Yes, and we will be compensated for any differential in, in cost okay. if that, that's all been worked out. All right, good. At 2019 is the uh, date they're going to switch over, so there's okay. a few years to go. Right, yeah. excellent. So when do you pr have any projection or prediction on a target date for the finishing of, of South Main Street and all of that? Uh, the okay. paving of that is up to the state. I don't know okay. that that's been scheduled, but they're going to do something with it. Uh, th that's also tied up in our smart streets uh, design. Uh, there was one concept called the Main Street Diet that the state uh -huh. is presenting to us where uh, you'd have uh, one travel lane in each direction and a, s a central turn lane that okay. could be either direction. All right. With bike paths on each side, and that has pros and cons. Sure, sure. Uh, so it, we have to really vet that and, and look at it. Uh, that may or may not be possible because of the density of curb cuts. There's just so many of them. You, you might have cars budding like this in that right. central lane. So <laughs> my feeling is it's probably not going to be done. Okay. But we're going to be very aggressive about putting bike paths on, on other parallel streets. We've already done that in Haverhill. Yep. It's a great bike run uh, yeah. to ride your bike on and uh, Summer Avenue. Mm -hmm. So those, those are very viable alternatives to Maine. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. Any other projects in town that you might want to highlight? Or? Uh, that, that's what, it, what came to mind. I uh, know miscellaneous uh, drainage projects, Libby Avenue, et cetera, yeah. and those are all pretty much done by now. Okay. But they've had the streets in a constant. Linden Street was a big one. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people go up Linden. Yeah. That's so done, and those streets will be paved in due course uh, okay. through our Regular, regular street. We, we've really uh, stepped up our investment in streets. I'm sure the folks have noticed that. Uh, seeing the Lozaro guys all over town. Right. They, they've been doing great work, I think. Uh, well, it does seem, mm -hmm. you know, just as someone who uses the streets mm -hmm. in town, it does seem like that there are an awful lot of streets yep. being paved all over the yep. place, and it can be a hassle to get around, but I think the long-term good of that is going to be uh, a positive thing for us. Yeah, we kind of fell off the uh, truck, uh, if you will, uh, doing street maintenance, I think, for about 20 years. Uh, there used to be a 50-year street improvement plan. I think uh -huh. that, that kind of went by the boards, but we now have dedicated uh, one to two million at least per year okay. in capital street improvements. So. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, I know that there's been a little bit of controversy with some development in town. I know the Prospect Street and what's happening. Any updates on what's happening with that, the development? You're uh, talking about the 40B? The down, 40B. Down, yeah. by the down by the depot, yeah. Yeah, uh, just a 25 cent. Explanation: sure. uh, The state uh, has a uh, law called Chapter 40B of the Acts. Uh, they can require any community who does not have 10% of its housing stock in affordable status mm -hmm. to build and uh, maybe even possibly exceed sure. the density that uh, the property is zoned. So a developer can come in, propose a 40B project under those circumstances, right. and get an approval sort of under duress from the ZBA. Sure. Now, in this case, it's interesting because since the town has worked so well with the state on this, we have made a lot of good progress in achieving that 10%. Right. They actually told the developer, play fair with the town of Reading. Oh, that, that's that's now a five-story building. So yeah. Yeah. That, that message went to the town and will go to the ZBA, and I, I right. think uh, some equitable negotiation will I'm ensue. I'm glad to hear that, yeah. Because yeah. to me, it looks like a property that could be and should be probably redeveloped into yeah. something that's nicer. Yeah. And I think that uh, mm -hmm. as long as the neighbors are taken into consideration for some of their concerns and that kind and of thing. And they did voice them, and we voiced ours. Absolutely. Uh, the I, developer you know, uh, seems to be trying to work with the town, uh, as from what I've seen. Right. He did right. come before the board. He did notice the neighbors. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. 
till the ZBA, but he, he did sure. do us the courtesy. Sure. Well, that's good to hear, and we'll just keep our eyes open for that sure. continued development, as well as other ones around town. Mm -hmm. um, now, as I said, you're, you're uh, uh, serving your second detached uh, time mm -hmm. on, the, on the Board of Select, but you're up for re-election. So I was just going to ask you, are you going to be running for re-election this year? Well, I gave that some thought, and uh, initially I was reluctant to do it, but we have a lot of unfinished business on the board. Okay. I'm going to commit to one more term and only one more term, okay. but, but I intend to take papers out, and in conjunction with that, uh, we are combining our two elections, the presidential right. primary and the town election will both be held March 1st. Right, so it's a little earlier than this year than right. people are used to, so getting papers and all Papers that kind of in early November, I'm told, by the Early town November, clerk, okay, so, yeah. yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have the town mm -hmm. moderator on this show to talk okay. a little bit about Great. that soon, too. Yeah. So you will be planning on running at least one more, for at least one more term. Yes. Excellent. Glad to hear that, Dan. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming on the program today. My pleasure, Kevin. All right. Thank you for some of the information on stuff that's been going on around town, and uh, we look forward to seeing some of these projects completed and continued advancement of our town as we move forward. Great. Thank you for watching. We've been talking with Dan Ensminger, who is the chairman of the Reading Board of Selectmen. We'll be back in just one moment here on Community Conversation on RCTV. That's all for this episode of Community Conversation. Thank you to Dan Ensminger and Greg Burns for being with us today. Be sure to look for our future episodes. Have a great day.